Welcome back to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I'm Jason Bowman. I love cars. Today I'm going to tell you my story of the Thunderbird Super Coupe. Hope you enjoy it. Super Coupes have been coming up in my Facebook Marketplace search of under $10,000 in manual transmission. My good friend Mike had one when we were in our 20s. I remember him letting me drive it. He warned me to be careful as it was a real handful. I snickered to myself having driven many high-powered Camaros and Mustangs. I jumped in and floored it, doing a very unexpected tank slapper opposite lock drift around the corner. Mike's early car only had 210 horsepower, but the supercharger provided 315 foot-pounds of tire-melting torque at a very low 2600 RPM. I love that car. We had so many adventures in it. Hello, I am a super cool Chevrolet Camaro Z28 Transformer. Please like, comment, and subscribe to Jason Bowman Loves Cars, or I will be forced to destroy you. You should probably join Jason Bowman Loves Cars on Facebook. Just saying. Ford started development of the MN12 mid-size North American Project 12 platform during the second quarter of 1984. Production was approved in mid-1985. The 10th Gen T-Bird was produced from 1989 to 1997. All good things come to an end and the Super Coupe was discontinued after the 1995 model year. It was introduced on December 26, 1988 as a 1989 model. The new Thunderbird was a slippery bird with a 0.31 coefficient of drag, bettering the previously already slippery bird 0.35 coefficient of drag. The new bird was slightly shorter than the 88 T-Bird, but the wheelbase was a full 9 inches longer. The Thunderbird featured a four-wheel independent suspension with short and long-arm front suspension with McPherson struts and multi-link rear suspension. The independent suspension gave the Thunderbird excellent handling. The independent suspension gave the Thunderbird excellent handling and a great ride quality. At the time, Ford Thunderbird, Mercury Cougar, Lincoln Mark 8, and the Chevrolet Corvette were the only domestic cars available with both rear-wheel drive and independent rear suspension. The Super Coupe came with a supercharged and intercooled 3.8-liter Essex overhead Vel V6. The engine was backed with either a Mazda M5R2 5-speed manual transmission or the AOD 4-speed auto tragic transmission. The AOD was replaced with the 4R70W for the 1994-1995 model year. The Super Coupe was a big deal, so much so that it was awarded Motor Trends Car of the Year for 1989. The supercharger created 12 PSI of boost at 5600 RPM. The early cars had an 8.2 to 1 compression ratio. They produced 210 horsepower and 315 foot-pounds of torque. The 94-95 Super Coupes had a higher 8.6 to 1 compression ratio. They made 230 horsepower at 4,000 RPM and 315 foot-pounds of torque at 2,600 RPM. The Super Coupes came with 16 by 7 inch aluminum wheels, high performance tires, a traction lock, limited slip differential. The Super Coupe had four-wheel vented discs with a standard anti-lock braking system. The steering rack was speed sensitive and had variable assist. The Super Coupe had a factory installed body kit with specific front bumper cover with fog lights and specific rear bumper cover and side skirts. They also had stiffer suspension and Tokiko adjustable shocks. The Super Coupe was equipped with electronic suspension control. A computer monitor brake line pressure, vehicle speed, steering angle, and throttle position signals to determine the shock valving. There were two settings, auto and firm. The automatic settings selected soft shock valving for a smooth, comfortable ride. When driving conditions required a firm ride, it automatically overrode the soft valving. The firm position defaulted the dampeners to maximum stiffness. All Thunderbirds got a mid-cycle refresh. The Super Coupe got the same supercharged 3.8 liter V6 as before, but the horsepower is bumped to 230 horsepower at 4400 RPM and 330 foot-pounds of torque at 2500 RPM. The power bump was due to several changes. The Eaton M90 Roots type supercharger got a larger square inlet and a larger inlet plenum and Teflon coated rotors. The 3.8 liter supercharged engine got larger fuel injectors and compression was raised from 8.6 to 1. 1990 was the 35th anniversary of the Thunderbird. Ford celebrated with a special edition Super Coupe. Painted black with a dark blue accent stripe and a titanium colored lower panels, they were also adorned with 35th anniversary badges. 3,371 35th anniversary cars were built. I don't usually include special edition cars in my videos due to their high values, but like all Super Coupes, the anniversary models are also a bargain. Ford tried to prevent counterfeit cars with fender badges that were designed to disintegrate if removed. Each 35th anniversary car came with a custom fitted cover made by the same company that makes covers for Rolls Royce. How oh, fancy! Pardon me, 
Do you have any gray poupon? The Super Coop commercials were pure 90s gold. Stock performance. Motor Week tested the 1989 Super Coupe and it went from 0 to 60 in 6 seconds and did the quarter mile in 15.9 at 87 miles per hour. 0 to 60 Times.com listed the 95 Super Coupe 0 to 60 mile per hour in 7 seconds and the quarter mile in 15.2. Aftermarket performance. The performance aftermarket is alive and well for the Super Coupe. Cold air intakes. Cap back exhaust. Headers, overdrive crank pulleys at 3 to 4 psi a boost, high flow blower cases. Performance suspension goodies are also plentiful. Lowering springs, thicker sway bars, tubular control arms. Racing, super coupes are often drag Wow, leaving them in the dust. Look at that. That SC took that SHO to Gapplebee's. SCs are often autocross. SCs are great track day cars. This guy drifts his T-Bird. I think it's a V8, but the video is too cool not to include. This crazy bugger mud bogs his SC. Perhaps the best use of a Super Coupe is to get it out on the freeway on a sunny day and let it stretch its legs. Wait, what was that? Holy crap, another jackalope sighting! Run. Buying a Super Coupe. By all accounts, the Super Coupe is pretty bulletproof. There are a few things to look out for, though. The Tin Worm likes to chew on the rear wheel wells inside the lower skirt area. Underneath the nose on the hood is also a common rust area. The Super Coupe was over-engineered and mechanically robust. Most of the buyer's guides I read sounded more like general 30-year-old car problems than anything actually vehicle-specific. My research did find a couple of specific common problem areas, though. A firm ride blinking idiot light in the dash cluster indicates an issue with one or more of the electronically controlled shock actuators. The original Tokiko adjustable shocks and struts are unfortunately obsolete. The odometer gears and the speedo head often break, which cause the odometer to stop accumulating. Thankfully, replacements are cheap and the job of replacing them is pretty straightforward. Classic.com suggests the average price of a 10th generation Thunderbird to be $9,702.
This seems pretty accurate. I took a look on Facebook Marketplace, and you can get a minty fresh Super Coupe for just under $15,000. You can get a nice driver for half that. The values appear to be on the rise, so get one soon before the prices soar like a majestic Thunderbird. Thanks for watching Jason Bowman Loves Cars and my story, The Thunderbird Super Coupe. Please remember to like, subscribe, and join the Jason Bowman Loves Cars Facebook page.